Hey, what's up everyone? In this video, we're gonna be comparing the Hoka on eight on eight Rocket X against the A6 Meta Racer. Hey, what's up everyone? And welcome back to 40 Runs. How are we all doing? Are you on a rest day? Let me know in the comments. I'd be very interested to know. So, two carbon plated racing shoes on the channel today. My favorite 10K shoe 2020, the A6 Meta Racer against the Rocket X, which I kind of enjoyed, but I was left a little bit confused because they told everybody that it's like a racing shoe and all this sort of stuff, but actually I felt with more of a sort of training and competition shoe um, versus some of the other shoes. So I thought it'd be cool actually to compare these two. Now for me, this is probably the closest comparison because I felt like the Rocket X for me is suited at those sort of 10, five, to, five to 10K runs like a good example is a run through event or you know one of these really cool events around the country where you just rock up and you know you bash out a 10k or bash out a 5k it's not an a race but you want something on your feet that's going to help you kick on during that sort of run uh, race that you are doing i think that's where this shoe comes into its own um stats and features time let's get into that before we get into uh, which one i prefer start with the hoka rocket x it's 140 pounds which i think is a bargain you've got the carbon plate in it which is borrowed over from the carbon x you've also got the same eva foam in this uh, as the carbon x it's got five mil drop uh what else do we need to know uh, mesh upper that's probably about it and then we've got the meta racer which i think still looks absolutely Awesome. Oh, Hoka's got an um, early stage um, um, rocker in it, by the way. And you've got the rubber on the outside. I'll show you the outside now. It's just going to that. I digress. But look, so this has got a big slab of um, ASICS grip on it. And then you've got the strategically placed bits of rubber there, which is great for traction, both from plenty of traction. Anyway, so this has got flight foam in it, the ASICS, um, which is kind of cool. Where is my notes? Uh, 7.25 ounces. You've got the carbon plate, which is bottom loaded. I'll come on to that in a second. You've got a low stack height, uh, 24 in the heel, 15 in the toe, 9 mil drop. Uh, you've got the guide tail technology, which has helped conserve um, energy. It's 180 pounds, so it's 40 pounds more. Um, and then, like I said a second ago, you've got the ASICS grip on the outsole. The shoe was designed to be ultra breathable. You've even got a hole in the front, so they're creating um, air through your foot to keep your body temperature down if you can, uh, which aids performance. You've got, like I said a second ago, you've got the bottom load. So the plate is like here. It's on the bottom part where the hoker is not. It's, it's running through it, but here it's on the bottom. So you get that sort of real snap off your toe. You've really got to be working on a forefoot um, to get the most out of this shoe, I feel. Where this shoe, you can sort of relax back a little bit onto the, onto the soft stuff and it will take you through with that Meta Rocker in it and then get you onto that plate. Uh, this is definitely a softer ride than this, but they're both kind of firmish, but this is definitely a softer feel than this. This really does feel to me like more of a racing shoe than this. This just feels, this feels like a really good fuel cell TC to me. Um, the fuel cell TC was always too soft for me. I was really collapsing in. I still come a little bit in, but not as much as I do on the TC. So this is like a firmer, Fuel Cell TC, which I really enjoyed. That's a carbon plated shoe. And that is a training and competition shoe. And that is why I go back to my original video, which I said, I think this shoe is suited more for training and competition than this, which I think is more for those A races and race days. I would wear this over this for an A race 10K. If I was looking for a PB uh, for a 10K, I would wear this shoe over this every day of the week. But I would train in this shoe for that day does that make any sense and this is the thing this is 140 pounds which is an absolute bargain this is 180 pounds so i think this is more of your a race shoe and if you're if you're able to afford like both then you're very lucky but if i was choosing between the two i'd pay the 40 pound more and buy the a6 but if you don't have 180 pounds you're still going to get a very good shoe at 140 pounds and you will be able to train it and you'll be able to do a lot more in it. Uh, and you'll still be able to wear it on race day where it will come into its own. Um, I've been wearing a lot my, uh, oh, they're over there, the Socony Endorphin Speeds uh, for sort of training runs and stuff. like that. I really like them and that's got a plate in it. So there's a lot to be said. You don't have to have them necessarily for just out and out race days. I think there is something to be said for this shoe for training and competition, but <laughs> Like I said a second ago, comparing the two, I would buy the ASICs every day of the week. 